Hey everyone, thanks for starting to learn to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Guardians of Atlantis 2. This is a brand new game by Wolf Designer. It is a 2-6 to six player game that can be expanded all the way up to 10 players with the additional purchase of a hero pack. It takes roughly an hour to two hours to play, and is a competitive game where one team is competing against the other team to meet their victory conditions first and be the winning team. In the game itself, this takes place on a small island in Atlantis where minions have continually been spawned throughout the centuries and have continued to battle each other out for some unknown reason. Well, the faction leaders have taken notice of this and want whatever treasure or item or artifact these minions seem to be fighting over because they must be fighting over something and it must be of value, so we have to have it. So that's where you as the players come in. You are going to play one or more heroes depending upon the number of players that are playing the game, and your faction is is going to be going head to head with another faction where you're trying to meet your victory conditions first and there are three different ways you can win this game the first is defeating enemy heroes each time an enemy hero is defeat or a, a hero is defeated their team has to spend a number of respawn tokens if a team ever runs out of respawn tokens then their faction has lost the second way is pushing your minions into your enemy's throne room if you can capture an enemy's throne room, the game is over and your faction wins. This is not going to be an easy task though, as you have to eliminate all of your enemy's minions on the battle zone in order to create a push where they'll move into the next battle zone. And the final way is each time a wave is pushed into another battle zone, then a wave token is removed. And if this is the last wave token, whichever faction created that last push will be the winning faction. So there's a long game to this as well. So some highlights for me, I really enjoyed the fact that this is a true strategy game. And what I mean by that is there are no dice or any other elements to create any luck. This is completely based on strategy. You know what cards are in your hands. You know pretty much what cards are in your enemy's hands if you're familiar with the game. And that's part of the fun of it is learning about the different characters and determining or remembering what kind of cards they have as you play different characters. As the game goes on, you're going to gain coins that you're going to spend to upgrade your character. And you're going to have to make some really tough decisions about which cards you're going to upgrade as you will upgrade your cards, removing a card and adding a new card into your deck that's going to be slightly better or give you a different ability. But no matter what you choose, you're always going to have five cards in your hand. So it's really going to be about working together as a team, deciding or getting into your opponent's head. And I love that. I love digging into that and trying to outwit and outthink my opponents and working together as a team. And I love cooperative games. And with this one, it is limited knowledge. So you are not going to have a team lead that's going to be telling you exactly what to do, where to go, what to kill, and that you really have to work on your own and know your hero and work together as a team. So if you're focusing on certain elements, whether it's a push, maybe you have heroes that are really good at moving around. So you're going to move around, try to keep the enemy off, off kilter and take out their minions so that you could create those pushes and get into the enemy's throne room or any other way. So that is something I really like. And I love the replayability with this game. No matter how many times you've played a hero, you are always learning new stuff and you're tailing your hero on the fly based on the game you're playing at the moment. So if, for example, you're playing a very combat oriented hero, but you need a little bit more defense, you have some cards in there potentially that will offer that. Or if you need to focus a little bit more on ranged or movement, depending upon the hero you've chosen, some of those might be options. So it's really interesting to see how player, players work with their heroes and change them. You can play the same hero multiple times and then somebody else will play it and they play something totally different. So I love that element where they're, you're always learning and you're always strategizing on what to do. So of course, these are just my opinions. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below as well. Let me know what you think on this one. If you're looking at backing, why or why not? And if you've played the original, this is a sequel. It's based on the original Guardians of Atlantis. The game has been rehauled, completely redone. There's new maps, new cards, new heroes to be added. Even the original heroes have been retooled. Their decks are completely renewed and rebalanced for this game. So let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys and start a conversation down below. And as always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribe to my channel, because it really does make a difference. It helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. And if you want to stick to all my videos, so consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. So let's head to the table, and I'll show you what this one's all about. The first thing we're we'll looking at are the character dashboards, as this is going to be one of the most important decisions you make before the game is which character you want to play. 
and each character's dashboard is going to have a gauge with the four different stats of that character to give you a good idea how that character plays. For example, with Balgrim the Destroyer, his attack rating is pretty good, he has an excellent defense rating, he's not so good with his initiative, and he's a pretty slow character to move around. So, depending upon your playstyles, this might be a character you want to play. Each of the character's boards is also going to have spots for their four cards to be played during their turn, a discard location, areas for their items for attack, defense, initiative, and then the combination of the rest, which are range, movement, and radius. And these will all be easier to see. I don't know if you guys can see these on the video. And then finally on the side of the board is going to be a quick reference on the cost to upgrade your character during each one of the end of round steps. On the back of the character boards is also going to be a backstory to that character and an image of that character. For the prototype, they don't have it, but I'll throw an image up if I can find one for you. Another important feature I want to talk about are the cards themselves, as each character is going to have their own custom unique deck of cards. Each player is going to start the game with five cards in their hand, which will be the two basic cards for the character, silver and gold, and their three level one cards for blue, red, and green. Each of these cards is going to have an initiative value in the top corner, and the higher the initiative, the faster that card will activate during the turn. Each card is also going to have a primary action and one to two secondary actions. And when a card is resolved, you're going to either choose to resolve its primary action, resolving any text at the bottom of the card, or one of its secondary actions. And each time you resolve a card, you can only choose one of these actions to resolve. Throughout the game, players are going to be gaining coins by defeating enemy heroes and minions. And at the end of each round, players are going to get to spend those coins to level up their cards. The silver and gold cards will never be leveled up, but the blue, red, and green cards will. And each time a card is leveled up, this is going to provide the player with a very important decision to make, as each card, when leveling up, is going to provide the player with two options. One of the cards that a player chooses will replace the existing card, and the other card will be gained as a new item that will increase one of the player's stats by one. And a player must upgrade all three of their level 1 cards to level 2 before upgrading to level 3. And then once a player upgrades all of their level 2 cards to level 3, the next time they level up, they're going to gain their ultimate card, which is going to provide the player with a permanent ability that's going to be active for the rest of the game. Alright, so at this point I'm going to put everything together and show you a couple sample turns so you can see how the game plays. So with this, each of the rounds is broken down into four turns, where the players are going to be playing cards face down and then simultaneously revealing those cards, and then the cards are going to be resolved in the highest initiative, working their way down to the lowest initiative. So let me show you an example of this. I've got these cards set up a little bit already, so I can show you some of how this works. And one of the important things with this is working as a team. This is a very important thing. As this game is totally based on strategy, there are no dice, there are no cards to draw to determine the results, everything is done on strategy. So depending upon how you play with your teammates and how your opponents play, you can kind of read and gauge and as the turns go on, you're going to learn what cards your opponent has and as they play cards, you're going to know what kind of cards are left in their hands. So you can kind of develop your strategies around that, attacking late in the turn, potentially being able to take that, that hero down, or dividing your attacks and focusing on killing the minions where you're going to get more coins to be able to upgrade your heroes, and also forcing the push where you're going to move into your enemy's battle zone. So there's a lot of different strategies you can employ to be victorious in this. So all of our players have their cards down, so we'll go ahead and reveal and see who has played the highest card. So the Wasp has played the highest card at 10, and she has Attract Fire. So she, again, can choose either to play it as a skill or use it as a movement card or a defense card. So she's going to go ahead and use it as a movement card, which allow her to move three spaces. So she's going to move one, two, three, adjacent to that enemy minion. And then that card is going to be played into her board. Moving on to the next player, we have Ronan with a 5, and he's going to use the card's skill, which is Shield. And it says this round, so it's going to last the remaining turns in the round. If a friendly minion in a radius of 2 would be defeated, you may discard a card, and if you do, the minion is not defeated. So he's got a shield that's going to cover all of the different minions that are around him that he can potentially keep them alive if they go down, if he can discard a card. So that's a really powerful ability. Next, his teammate's going to go, and he played Waveform. So this one is going to allow him to place his hero in a space in range, which is not adjacent to an enemy spawn point. 
So it has a range of three spaces. So he's going to go one, two, and three, placing himself here next to the enemy team member. And then finally, we have Tiger Claw, which this one he's going to play as a movement card, lets him move two spaces. So he's going to move one, two to there. Then now that all players have played their cards, then again we'll go through and choose a new set of cards. So each one of our players again will play a card from their hand that they have remaining. And then once all players have them down, we'll reveal. And woof, we got some high initiative cards now. So the Tiger Claw player has a 13, so he's going to be the very first to go. And he played his basic attack card. This one has him move to a space directly behind the target, so he's going to have to move over here. If he wasn't able to do that, then he would not be able to do this attack. And then he's going to attack that minion, eliminating it. At that point, he's going to get two gold for that minion as well, and then he'll place his card over here. Next, we'll go with our two heroes here. They're tied at 11, so anytime there's a tie, we're going to consult the the tiebreaker token and flip it over to the next side after resolving so the blue team will get to go first so we're going to resolve his attack first and he is going to attack her she this attack is a four and then we're also going to calculate any bonuses so if he had any items he would receive bonuses for those items but he doesn't so it's a straight up attack of four and then she's going to play her defense she can play a card from her hand discarding it to gain that defensive bonus and then if she's adjacent to any minions and if she has any items that grant a defensive bonus she'll also calculate that so she is adjacent to one friendly minion so that's going to add plus one to her defense but she's also adjacent to a, a enemy minion that's melee so that's going to take one away so it's going to neutralize that so she is going to have to play her attack card as it is the only card that has a defense high enough to stop this attack. So she's going to discard that card to her discard pile, but she has avoided that attack. So then this one is going to place it in his turn area. Then she's going to resolve her step, so she is going to attack. And she's going to attack one of those minions instead of the enemy hero. And she will simply eliminate that minion with that attack. And it is out of range of Bronin, so he cannot play a card to keep that minion in play either. She's also going to gain two points. And then it'll move over to Bronin's turn. He's going to finish the round off, and his attack forces him to move two spaces in a straight line and then attack. So he is going to go ahead and move up to and attack her. This is an attack of six, and there are no friendly minions adjacent to her, so there aren't going to be any bonuses there for that. And she doesn't, he doesn't have any items, so it's going to be straight up six. But he did know for a fact that she didn't have any cards that are going to get her a high enough defense to be able to stop this, as the, the card that she has left in her hand is, has a defense of three. She is adjacent to one minion, so that would bump it up to a four, but it's still not enough to save her from his attack, as he's got a super powerful attack. So she is going to be eliminated. Each uh, Bronin and his teammates are going to gain a coin for that. Based on the hero's level, she's only level 1, so the urge only going to get one coin. And then she is going to be eliminated. Now next turn, she'll be able to come back in, but she's going to have to start off in one of her spawn points, and then she'll have to work her way back over. So at this point, all the heroes have played their, their cards, so then we would go into the third turn, where the players are going to play their cards again. And this is going to continue until the four turns have been resolved. At that point, then we move into a minion battle. So let me show you how that works. You're going to total up all of the minions on the area on the battle zone. So the red team or orange team has one, two, three, four, five, six, and the blue team has one, two, three, four. So the blue team lost by two. So they're going to lose two additional minions on top of that, and they get to choose which ones, except for the heavy minion. He is always the last one to go. So with the players, we're going to go ahead and take this minion and that one away. Keeping the minions separated so the players can't hopefully gang up on them. At that point, now if all the minions had been eliminated from the blue team, then the orange team would push forward, repopulating this next battle zone with new minions. So that is part of the strategy is trying to eliminate your opponent, opponent's minions and continuing on trying to push towards that throne room. 
And then the final step is any hero that has coins at the end of the round must upgrade with those coins. So let me show you an example of this with Brogan here. He does have a coin and the very first upgrade is only going to cost one coin. So he's going to spend that and place it back in the supply. And then he's going to choose one of his cards. So again, we can choose either the green, the red or the blue to level up. And let's go ahead and say that Brogan really wanted to focus on his attack, so he's going to upgrade his red card. So he's going to pull out the two level two red cards. He will choose one of those cards that he wants to upgrade to. So we have a couple choices. We can have the throwing axe that'll give him a little bit of a ranged attack, but it's going to drop his attack power down quite a bit. Or we can do the upgraded attack that's going to give him the bull rush. This is a, has a little higher initiative little bit better defense but the same attack and it's going to give him a little bit more on the ability so with this one it says before the attack you must move two spaces in a straight line and you can make you may move through tokens and minions so that gives him a little bit more flexibility with that so he's going to go ahead and choose that one replacing this one so this one can be returned to the supply as he won't use it for the rest of the game and then this one he's going to gain as an item so he'll go ahead and flip that card over and place it underneath his card where it is for that bonus so this one gives him plus one defense so it's going to line up and be placed under his defensive mark that way then all of his opponents can easily reference that and see that oh bronin has a additional defense now so we have to keep that in mind and those will continue to stack so if he gets other cards later on in the game that increase that defense that'll continue stacking up and each item only gives a plus one so you don't have to worry about potentially reading them you can simply see where they're located and know exactly what kind of bonus you, your opponent has based on the number of items under that category so if you have two cards under your attack stat you already know that that character has plus two to whatever attack card he plays and then the rest of the cards will be returned to his hand. And this is true for any character, and you can gain multiple levels during the end of the round if you have enough points to spend on those levels. And again, those are all going to be referenced on the side of the board. So in order for Bronin to level up again, he would have had to have an additional two coins to do that. So he would have had to have three coins to level up twice. And again, that is based on where you're at in the level. And this is going to continue until one of those endgame conditions is met. So I hope you guys found this video helpful in deciding whether or not you want to back this game. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel as it really does make a big difference, helps me to continue to grow and produce these videos. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.